welcome back to my channel. Today it is a very, very snowy Friday, so I decided what better way to spend the day than to go over my 24 books that I want to read in 2024. I probably should have established this a little bit earlier in the month, but you know what? I ease my way into January and everything like that, so that's why it's, it, it's only being done now. But I have an entire list on my phone. I have some books on the list that I already own, and then I have books that I don't own but want, or ones that are going to be new releases. So we're going to start with the ones that I do own, because I feel like that makes the most sense. So diving right into it. First up, we have Swordcatcher by Cassandra Clare. I've talked about this already on at least one or two of my videos because it was in a monthly TBR, and I just didn't get to it. So, oops. <laughs> but this is Cassandra Clare's first adult fantasy. It is about a young boy who is considered a sword catcher. He is the body double for someone in the royal family, and his whole purpose in life is to be a sword catcher. He is meant to die for the person he is doubling as. And he meets this young woman who is a physician and she has rare magical abilities. Uh, a failed assassination attempt brings them together and it says that they sort of get roped into this whole world with another sort of like important figure or leader or something like that. And like it says as long as as long kept secrets and rivalry must ask themselves, can forbidden love bring down a kingdom? And will their discoveries plunge the nation into war and the world into chaos? So I'm not really sure how we get to that dramatic of a question, but it, it, somehow we get there. So I'm really excited about it. I love Cassandra Clare's writing. I love the Mortal Instruments series, and I am very excited to see what she does with an adult fantasy. Next up, we have Starling House. I really know next to nothing about this book. I just know that everybody seemed to love it, so I really wanted to give it a try, and I got this beautiful edition from Illumicrate, so it's on my list. Uh, but I, I, yeah, I really know nothing about it. It says that nobody in Eden remembers when Starling House was built, but the town agrees it's best to let this ill-omened mansion and its last lonely heir go to hell. Stories of the house's bad luck like good china have been passed down from generations. Opal knows better than to mess with the haunted house or brooding men, but when an opportunity to work there arises, the money might get her brother out of Eden. Starling House is uncanny and full of secrets, just like Arthur, its heir. It also feels strangely dangerously like something she's never had, a home. Yet Opal isn't the only one interested in the horrors and the wonders that lie buried beneath. Sinister forces converge on Eden, and Opal realizes that if she wants a home, she'll have to fight for it. Even if it involves digging up her family's ugly past to achieve a better future, she'll have to go down, deep down, beneath Starling House to claw her way back to the light. So it sounds like there's like a bit of a haunted house situation in here, like a gothic horror, and then some other outside forces that are causing problems as well. So it, it, I think it sounds it sounds really interesting and like like I said, this cover's just beautiful. Then we have probably one of my more intimidating reads of the year, and that is Manigold by I don't want to butcher this name. We're gonna try Sendlin Yu. Uh, it is a fan fiction. It's a Dramini fan fiction. So it's Draco and Hermione from the Harry Potter series. I haven't really read any fan fiction just because when I would stumble across it on Wattpad when I used to read Wattpad stories, they just seemed very like... I don't know how I want to phrase this. Childish? Like the writing was just very, very young and very childish like uh, it seemed like most people that were writing that were writing fan fiction were young like middle schoolers maybe some high schoolers and stuff so I never really like parsed through it to find the well-written fan fiction and I have heard that there is fantastic fan fiction and this is one of them so I really wanted to get in on it and experience some really well-written fan fiction and like obviously like this person just put a lot of heart and soul into this it is an extremely long book there are let me see here 867 60 870 pages in here and there's pictures and everything like it just it's it, it's it's a chunker 
it's a chunker, but like you can tell that if there's that much in here, obviously the writer really put their heart and soul in this. And like I said, I've heard fantastic things about this book. I've heard it's devastatingly beautiful uh, and just a lot of emotions. And I'm excited to see like this side of the Harry Potter story. Obviously it's not the Harry Potter story, but like a lot of people seem to really like the idea of Hermione and Draco together. So I'm very curious about that whole world and everything like that. So very excited to read this, just very intimidated, obviously. Then we have A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. This was on my fall TBR a few months ago. It follows a young woman who is an architecture student and she has this favorite author that she absolutely adores and an opportunity comes up that she can go and try to renovate the house that he lived in. So she obviously jumps at the chance. There is already a literature student that is at the house and he is sort of there for the opposite reasons. He is trying to prove that the author isn't really as great as everybody thinks he is and they sort of are at odds with each other but then I think there's supposed to be some other element that comes into play. I don't remember if it's magic or what exactly it is but I know it's supposed to, this is like a dark academia and I haven't really read any dark academia. So I am still very excited to get into this whenever I get the chance and this is like the pretty sprayed edge version so eventually, hopefully, that's the goal. Next up we have Belladonna. I want to read this whole series so I know right now Fox Club is out and then I think the third one is coming out sometime this year. So hopefully we can get to that. I don't know too terribly much about this either other than Belladonna herself is... Um, actually no that's not even her name. I don't remember why Belladonna is the title of this. It says for as long as Signa Farrow has been alive the people in her life have fallen like stars. So she's orphaned and Various family members have like sort of taken care of her. She bounces around a lot. There is someone in her family that have a lot of money and everything and suddenly the matriarch of that family dies and they seem to think that there's a lot more going on that the rest of the family could be in danger. So Cygna starts trying to hunt down the killer and she sort of partners up with death, which I think is so unique. I love when death is actually characterized in stories and becomes his own person. And I'm very, very curious to see how that characterization plays out in this book because one of the only other ones that I've read that is like that is The Book Thief. And I really liked the personif personification, it's not the right word, but like, like the characterization of death in that book. So very curious about that. Then we have another series and that is Akatar. I know I keep saying we're gonna read this, guys. It is on my January TBR, so like, hopefully. Hopefully we get to it. I just don't know. All I know is that this book is about a young woman that kills a wolf, or she thinks she does. Turns out it's a fae in disguise, and she gets taken to the fae lands as punishment for killing one of their people. And she knows that she's not supposed to really have anything to do with the fairy people, like the fae, because everybody thinks they're dangerous, so they know about them, but they're supposed to stay separated. Obviously, that didn't happen in this. And it says that she has to find a way to stop this wicked shadow that is growing, or else it might doom the fae worlds forever. I've heard fantastic things about this series. It's why I, I have all of them. Just... I don't know, I keep putting it off because I'm really worried that it's not gonna live up to the hype for me. Then we have After the Forest by Kel Woods. I will say the fact that her last name is Woods never really occurred to me until I tried to read the title and I went, wait a minute, which words, which words are the right one? Stupid, I know. Uh, but this is a fantasy. It is supposed to be sort of a continuation of the story of Hansel and Gretel after they escape the witch's cabin. That's about all I got for this one. That's all I know. But I like the idea of a, a story continuation for that. Then we have one for my enemy by Olive Blake. This was also on my fall TBR and I just, I just didn't get to it. I had too many on my fall TBR. So that's the problem. But uh, I think, so I know the reason that I bought this originally is because Sarah Caroli was talking about it on one of her YouTube videos that I had watched and it sounded really good. I know that it is more of an urban fantasy. It's set in like modern day Manhattan and there are two rival witch families that are sort of like, 
obviously against each other and I think I might be wrong. I thought there was like a marriage of convenience in here, but I don't think that's accurate. I it says that they're all fighting to maintain control. So it's about two rival witch families in Manhattan. That's all I got. <laughs> Next up we have The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. This is on my list because I watched the movie with Lucy Hale in 2022, maybe 2023. I can't quite remember. I guess it depends on when it came out. Shortly after it came out and it is a workplace rivals to lovers or romance type setting. And I really, really liked the movie. It was so funny. I felt like the like her character was like the cute quirky girl that I actually really enjoyed. And I just, I loved it. It was, it was cute, it was sweet. It was the perfect rom rom-com chick flick type thing. So I'm really hoping that the book does the movie justice, which is very weird to say. I should, uh, not normally one to say that the movie is better than the book, but I really like the movie. So then we have My Dark Romeo. I think this is meant to be like a Romeo and Juliet retelling, but that's about all I know for this one. And I'm okay with this, you know, I'm not gonna, I don't really wanna go into this one trying to figure out the plot. So we're gonna leave it at Romeo and Juliet retelling. Then we have House of Salt and Sorrow. I think that this one is another fantasy. Uh, it says that she lives a sheltered life at Highmore with her sisters. There were once 12 of them, but now four of the girls' lives have been cut short, each death more tragic than the last. The main character, Anna Lee, has ghostly vi visions, uh, and she starts to think that her sister's deaths weren't accidents. The girls have been sneaking out every night to attend glittering balls, dancing until dawn in silk gowns and shimmering slippers. And Anna Lee isn't sure whether to try to stop them or to join their forbidden trysts, but who or what are they really dancing with? When her involvement with a mysterious stranger with secrets of his own intensifies, it's a race to unravel the darkness that has fallen over her family before it claims her next. It is a spellbinding novel filled with magic and the rustle of gosmere skirts down long, dark hallways. So it just sounds perfect. It gives... Maybe like a little bit of a gothic horror again, maybe, and just like the glittering ball gowns and the princess vibes with like a darker setting. So that sort of drew me in when I saw it. Next up we have These Hollow Vows by Lexi Ryan. It says that Brie knew any- uh, Brie would do anything before making a deal with the Fae. Death is better than their vicious schemes, but when her sister is taken by the sadistic king of the Unseelie, she breaks her own rules and agrees to steal three magical relics from the rival Seely court in exchange for her sister's return. Her only way inside is to pose as it poses a potential bride for the Seely prince, Ronan, a prince who's not quite as wicked as she once thought. And willing to let her heart distract her, she accepts help from a band of misfits with their own secret agenda. But as Brie spends time with their mysterious leader, Finn, she finds herself struggling to resist his seductive charm. Caught between two dangerous courts, Brie must decide who to trust with her loyalty and with her heart. That is actually the first time I've read that synopsis. I had this on my wish list and someone gifted it to me, so I, I didn't really know what it was about, but this sounds so good. It sounds like there's gonna be like maybe like a love triangle. I like the band of thieves and stuff is making me think of Robin Hood and his Merry Men. I don't know why. But it is, so we'll see if it gives that vibe or not. And you throw Faye in there and it gets really good anyway. So I'm very excited about this. I know that there is a sequel. I think it's only a duology, hopefully. Next up, we have Ruthless Vows by Rebecca Ross. This is the sequel and final book for the Letters of Enchantment series. Divine Rivals is the first one. And I finished that in December. I adored it. I adored that book. Everything about it is so magical and so sweet and the writing is so poetic and the romance in there is just everything that you want an adorable romance to be. I could not get enough of these characters. Uh, Roman and Iris are just they're perfect for each other. They're absolutely like the epitome of soulmates and their love story was written so well. I love the letters and the correspondence between them and, and the way that they fall in love with each other before they even realize that they are. It just, I, I loved it. I, I can't wait to read this book. I'm so excited about 
getting back into their world. And I know I say excited about every book. I'm sorry, but like, I'm always excited about my books. So I'm going to keep saying it. I know it's irritating hearing me say that repeatedly. Someday I'll find a different word to use, maybe. <laughs> but yeah, can't wait to read this sequel and see how their story ends. Hopefully, hopefully it's a happy ending. I want it to be a happy ending. Next up, we have Wildfire by Hannah Grace. I read Icebreaker in December and absolutely adored that book. So of course I had to go and I had to get the next one in the series. This one follows Russ, which is one of the hockey players. He has a one night stand with someone named Aurora and he doesn't even get to really ask her name, which I love because Aurora is such a princess name for Sleeping Beauty and he she slipped away before he could ask her name and that sounds so fairy tale. Anyway, <laughs> so they end up running into each other again later at a summer camp and the camp has a very strict no fraternization rule, but of course like that's probably gonna happen. It's probably gonna happen, right? So I'm very excited to read this, to get back into this world with all of the hockey guys. I'm hoping that the fam family is still in here, even though they're not at the college setting. I'm excited that it's at a summer camp because I worked at a summer camp in high school and loved every summer that I spent there. So very excited about that setting. The last book that I have a physical copy of currently is Dance of Thieves. This is a duology that I really want to read. I know it is sort of about an outlaw family that claims to be the first among nations. Uh, I think... You know what? I really don't know what this is about. I thought I did, but now I'm reading the back of this and I'm not entirely sure that I know what it's about. And that's okay, but I, I, I've seen a lot of people post about this and they really love it. So I'm excited to read that one. I'm sorry that I don't have good synopsises for you guys sometimes. Sometimes I really do try to go into these books blind and I pick them because other people seem to love them. And that's just sort of how I am. So I'm sorry about that. Moving on to the books that I don't have physical copies of. I am gonna look at my phone because I have a terrible memory. So <laughs> I have to look at my phone on the list to see what they are. Uh, first up, we have the Natural series. Everybody keeps raving that this is like a YA criminal minds and I adore Criminal Minds, so of course I have to read books that are like YA versions of that. My roommate, well, she was my roommate, like one of my really good friends when she lived with me, she has just as an extensive a collection of books as I do, and she had these books years ago before they like blew up, and she kept telling me to read them and I never got around to them, and now I'm kicking myself for not getting to them. But we're gonna get to them this year. Uh, then we have the Darker Shade of Magic series by V.E. Schwab. I don't know really anything about this series. I know it's more of an adult fantasy and people really love his fantasy books. So I just, I really want to give him a try because I've heard a lot about him as an author. Then we have the One Dark Window duology. I have seen this literally everywhere. People are saying that if they liked Fourth Wing, they liked this better than Fourth Wing. And... I gotta figure out if that's true or not. I know that it's a fantasy and there's some kind of, it's like a mist or a fog or something like that and an illness that people have and then there's something with like these magical cards that you have to collect. Like, I really am not 100% sure what the plot line is other than like those ideas that I keep hearing consistently for people's reviews of this book. But everybody seems to absolutely rave about it and I've been wanting to read it for a while. So it is definitely on my list for this year. Then we have Reckless by Lauren Roberts. This is the sequel to Powerless, which I read last year. It was one of my top reads of the year. And I just, I, I can't wait to see what happens with Kai and Peyton and their story. I, I see more of the angst to get back into the that world. Like I'm so excited guys, I already, I already have two copies of this book ordered. <laughs> yeah, I have a problem. Moving on from that. Then we have A Touch of Chaos by Scarlett Sinclair. This is the final book in her Hades Persephone, Hades saga, like that whole series. Uh, I don't know if this is one is technically Hades Persephone or the Hades saga. It doesn't really matter. It wraps up their entire storyline and I'm curious to see where it goes like if she gives them a happy ending if it 
has a lot of tragedy in it. I feel like it's gonna have some tragedy because of Greek gods. I feel like tragedy is gonna be involved in this. But I'm just excited to see how it wraps up because I absolutely loved that series last year and I was very, very surprised by that. Then we have The Reappearance of Rachel Price by Holly Jackson. Holly Jackson wrote Five Survive and A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I loved both of those. Uh, Five Survive is a standalone, but The Good Girl's Guide to Murder is a trilogy and it was one of my favorite reads. I think last year or the year before that, whenever I read it, I just fell into those books. Like super easy to read, very fast moving, and not really boring like you think a YA thriller would be. So I'm really, really curious what she's going to do with a new storyline. I know that this follows a young girl whose mom went missing, I don't remember how many years prior, and then all of a sudden she just reappears, hence the title. And this whole, like, I think it's a, it's a podcast or a documentary, I forget which one, is sort of reevaluating what had happened with the case and her disappearance and trying to figure out, like, what on earth is going on that she left and now all of a sudden she's back. Uh, next, we have Daydream by Hannah Grace. This is going to be the third in the Maple Hill series. It releases sometime this year, I forget when. I think sometime in the summer. And it follows... Uh, I forget what his name is right now, which is very irritating because he was one of my favorite characters in Icebreaker. It follows a new male character and I think his tutor, but I could be wrong about that. I, I don't remember anymore, but very excited to continue that whole series. Uh, after that, we have the third book in the Fourth Wing series. I think that there is actually like a name for the whole series. I just don't know it. So we're calling it the third Fourth Wing. There isn't a title out yet to my knowledge, but obviously I loved the first two, both five star reads. So I can't wait to see where the rest of this series goes, especially with the cliffhanger that she left us on in the second book. So yeah. Then we have Listen for the Lie by Amy Tintera. This was one that I actually mentioned in my like new books to look for in 2024. It's like, it's a thriller. It is another like podcast documentary style story. And I just want to try to get a little bit more into thrillers next year because I feel like I didn't read that many this year. But when I was reading the synopsis for this, it sounded really intriguing. And like I said, I want to try to get a little bit more into those because I really do love that genre. And that is it for my 24 books that I want to read in 2024. I am very excited for all of these. Obviously, there's more than 24 of them because I keep putting books on here that are part of series and I want to like, I would like to finish the entire series as part of this goal. So I'm not really sure how many books that actually amounts to. Thankfully, I think the longest series in this whole list is going to be Akatar. The rest of them are pretty much just duologies. I think there's one trilogy in here, I think. I think the Belladonna series is the only one that's a trilogy. So I, I struggle. I struggle to pick standalones. I like series. I like being able to stay in the world for for multiple books. I, 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 I don't have anything else to say about it other than that. <laughs> so anyway, those are the 24 books that I want to read this year. Let me know in the comments what some of your top reads are going to be this year, like what your most anticipated reads are. Uh, maybe I'll add some more to my list. Maybe we have some in common. I'm very curious to know. But that is the end. I hope that you liked this video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really does mean a lot to me. And I hope that you are having a great day, a great week. If you've gotten some snow recently, I hope that you're enjoying it. I like looking at it. It's very pretty. I just don't like going out in it. But I hope that you guys are enjoying it in whatever form you've had it. And I will see you guys very, very soon. Bye.